Bryce Dennis here, and my TED Talk is going to be over building relationships. So first of all, the importance of building relationships first starts with enhancing the learning experience for the student. So when you build relationships, you build trust with your students, uh, which helps uh, those students to engage within the learning process more. It also fosters an environment where students feel comfortable asking questions, seeking clarification, and actively participating within the class activities. Next, you wanna keep a, an open line of communication. So when, uh, when you build a relationship with your students, uh, your students trust you, and this helps facilitate uh, the exchange of ideas, feedback, different concerns, and allows for a more collaborative and supportive uh, setting within the learning environment. Next is motivation and confidence. So when you build a relationship and a rapport with your students, it ends up boosting that motivation and confidence within them. So then they're uh, more likely to persevere through challenging tasks and then strive for excellence. And then lastly, the personalized support. So when you're building relationships, then you can personalize your support for that student. Uh, you know their strength, you know their weaknesses, uh, their different learning uh, styles. So then you can tailor your, uh, you know, your content and your class around uh, students' needs, and you do this by getting to know them. So some best practices for building relationships. Number one is active listening. So when you're actively listening, you are demonstrating that you are there to care about that student and you are working for that student and they know that that they can um, come to you talk to you with their concerns and you're not just uh, there just sitting there and not actively listening uh, being approachable is uh, the next one so approachability so when you're approachable this encourages students to uh, reach out and seek for clarification um, whether it's in person or through electronic communication Next is fair and consistent treatment. So when you treat all students fairly and consistently, it establishes a clear expectation and um, allows uh, students to know that you are treating each individual the same, uh, no matter where they come from. Uh, empathy. So having empathy is very important. You must demonstrate some empathy towards students, uh, different challenges and struggles. They have different uh, backgrounds. They have different things going on within their lives. You have to have some empathy for that in order to uh, build that connection between them. And then lastly is transparent communication. So provide clear and concise explanations of what your ex objectives are for assignments, your expectations within a class, and then how you'll be assessing them so that you avoid any confusion. And they know exactly what they need to do within your class. Uh, so learning the different needs and interests of your learners. So one of the first ones uh, that I always do is start off with a survey or assessment. So when you give a survey, asking a little bit more about your student, it allows you to get to know their background, their goals, uh, their different expectations of the courses. And then you can have different assessments, such as different learning styles and things of that nature. Um, have individual meetings with those students. So make sure to connect with those students, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one. ask them what their goals are personally within the class, uh, what they wanna have within the class, what their goals are for life, and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one. not just do this once, but throughout the semester, so students know that you care about them and what their goals are that they're trying to achieve um, within it. And then incorporate student feedback. So at the uh, end of a unit or in the middle of a course, at midterm, at the end of the course, have a survey and get a little bit of feedback from the student about what they liked, disliked about the uh, class, um, what they liked about teaching methods, um, and then just their overall learning experience. Next is addressing different uh, students' viewpoints. So first thing you gotta do is have respectful dialogue. So encourage open, respectful dialogue amongst yourself and your students. Uh, create a safe space where students feel comfortable expressing their opinions without fear of judgment uh, within that class and 
of either of yourself or other students. Um, and then also uh, have diverse perspectives. So embrace diversity uh, of thought and encourage students to consider multiple perspectives, not just their own uh, whenever you're talking about a subject. This helps foster critical thinking and richer learning experiences. And then lastly, applying a Christian worldview. So when applying a Christian worldview, you want to uh, include uh, things that Christianity is all about. So being inclusive, so having inclusive curriculum, so integrate different diverse perspectives and voices into your curriculum that reflect the richness of the human experience. So not just um, your own personal view, but try to get a worldview of things. Uh, res have respect for all individuals. So uh, foster an environment where individuals, regardless of their background and beliefs, feel respected and valued, just like a true Christian would. Uh, ethical conduct. So want to be able to model ethical conduct and promote values such as compassion, justice, and love in both teaching and your interactions with your students, which is everything that Christianity is about, that having that uh, compassion and love for all. And then lastly, cultivating a caring community. So encourage a sense of community and care amongst your students, emphasizing the importance of empathy and understanding towards one another and just like a Christian should, they should always be thinking about those things. Here are my resources, and thank you for uh, listening to my TED Talk.